Yay. I'm not waiting for her to finish drawing on things so I can be drawing as fast as I can. All right. So welcome to Introduction to Tablet Weaving. Um, I'm Kiri McElfton. Uh, we are brain dies. Sorry. <laughs> Let's get started. Um, you'll need a loom. You'll need scissors, a shuttle to put your thread on as you go through, cards. I like these tiny little cards because they are about two inches. And are they you can't plastic see them or wood? There. Say again? Are they plastic or wood? Plastic. They're a corrugated um, cardboard, I think. Okay. okay. Um, when you get started, you can use chopsticks or a few other things to give you a nice even edge to work with. I found the IKEA bag strips. Clips work really well. Oh. Yeah. And then you want to make sure you've got thread. I've got four spools to thread out because I want to also show a little bit of a faster way to warp your loom than thread by thread, which is how I originally learned and I hate. <laughs> All right. So let's move on to the tablet weaving instructions, or the instructions for the Osberg narrow band. Let's go. I want that there so I can see it. So this is the band. I need to move that here. Don't auto fit. Sorry, computer annoys me. Anyway, um, it's a very simplified band. It's really straightforward to get up, partially because there's only 10 cards. So it doesn't take a long enough time to get in place. And it's really simplified uh, for the most part on its patterning and sequence. The other nice thing is you turn all the cards together in one direction, so you don't have to worry about turning some cards forward and other cards backwards. Oh, well, that's um, nice. Yeah. Uh, so the thing I want to point out, on any pattern you look at, you want to verify the labeling position of your cards and what they mean by turning forwards versus backwards, as well as their S versus C uh, definition because that can change a little bit based on where the um, author of the pattern learned. Oh, yeah. And it's largely a difference of which way is the twist building up. Some uh, set up the S versus Z patterning to be dependent or to reflect the twist after, like after you've rotated the cards Ooh. on the side closest to you that's woven. Others do it so that it's on the farthest side from you. Uh, the twist that's accumulating on the unwoven edge is where it's reflecting that, that twist turning. So you always want to double check it. If you do end up warping it entirely and you've got your S's and Z's flipped completely, but they're uniformly flipped, uh, you may be able to flip them back and be fine. But if you've got a variety of colors, positionings, it could be a little wonky to do. If that does happen, though, you can keep going, and it won't be a problem. Prob the only difference is your pattern is going to be on the underside of your band rather than the top side. Hmm. Yeah. So you can still weave it. You just have to flip your loom upside down to see the woven bit. <laughs> that works. <laughs> So for, oh, the other note is if you take a look at the positioning of where the A, B, C, D cards are, in this case, we are, um, we see the A, B, C, and D facing uh, that way. So you've got A and D at the top. This means the cards are gonna be facing to the right, which is usually an indicator that it's done uh, intended with a right-handed use, a right-handed uh, setup. Left-handed, it's usually going to be either B and C at the top or A and B at the top because these get flipped um, across this line here. For the most part, um, when someone says you're turning forward, it means you're turning away from you. Okay, yeah, going forward. <laughs> that then. I tend to try to prefer saying we're weaving, we're rotating our cards away from us or we're rotating our cards towards us. It's a little bit, I find it a little less confusing. 
on if you can see here, turning the tablets forward is to actually rotate them backwards for this pattern. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a good thing to always double check that. Fortunately yeah. for this band, um, if you rotate backwards, all it's going to do is these diamonds are going to flip the direction. Oh, oh that's so, not so bad. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, and if we were doing this one, then in this section, this line here would be over here instead. And this would be up there. Good. Just mirrors the pattern. For an all forward pattern, it's not too much of a problem. One that's reliant on a particular turn sequence that can be a little bit more of a problem. So keep an eye on it when you do so. Not a good thing for the dyslexic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a little keep track of. So this is our threading diagram. Each of the columns here are one card. And then each of the rows is that hole on that card. So Ooh. in this first top left corner, this is going to be card one, hole A, and then card two, hole A, and across the board that way. These, if you are setting them up right-handed, I would suggest starting going from left to right on the pattern. If you're setting it up right, left-handed, you want to set your cards up in the reverse direction because your backing for your loom is on the other side. Okay. There's two variations for the pattern. We're going to be using the standard one, which is this one here. And I can't do the highlighting I want, so we'll just do it this way, that one. Uh, cool. This is the other variation for it. So this is how the standard pattern comes out and how the uh, variation pattern comes out. All right. There is one preference note that I'll do on this. Um, I'm going to add, I may add one more card on here because I like ending in the same threading weight. No, scratch that, scratch that. I don't like unbalanced things, so I may take out one card here. Or add one at the other end. We'll see. All right. So we are going to switch now to webcam. I realized I don't have captions on. Turn those on. I like the Google Meets captions. They seem to work pretty well. We tried them earlier. We had, it was hit or miss. It was <laughs> amazing. All right, so I want this to be pinned. No, that's fine. All right. So, so we have our loom. We have our cards, shuttle, scissors, uh, bag clip, and thread. So what I'm going to start with is taking a card. And since I'm right-handed, I'm going to have the card facing this direction. Oh, there was one other thing we need. Tape. Or another method if you use another one to anchor your thread onto your loom as you go through your warping path. Tape usually, like masking tape usually works pretty well for me. Right. And I'm going to use yellow for yellow and red for blue so I don't get massively confused. Then, since this one is an S, that means we are going to do uh, coming in from the back of the card to the front. Part of the reasoning behind that, another way you can tell or, or the double check it is from this pattern, you make a bit of an S shape with the center line of the S versus Z. So as a, the center part of an S goes from the top left to bottom right, it mimics how you will thread the cards. I realize that it's too high. 
Uh, likewise, if it was the other way, you can see if it was a Z threading, it would go the opposite direction. We are going to go with an S. And because I have two spools of thread, we're going to do the extra step, which is I'm taking my second source of thread and also putting it through at the same time. And we're just going to knot it so it doesn't want to run away from us. Anchor it. Now, take the thread, and I'm going to put this through a shorter warp, just so it's a bit faster. Uh, so I'm doing it this way. And because this is so fast, I'm now done the first warping path. <laughs> Normally, I would take this down here and then kind of go back and forth. Of course, I loosened that and I lost it. Back and forth along these spools a bunch of times to come back up to the top. Since I'm doing a shorter path, I don't have to. And this will make something that's going to be maybe a foot and a half or so. The other thing you want to make sure you do is when you tie these, if you're doing a standard knot, you want to do over and under, and then under and over. So I'm doing over and under so that when you tie your knot, it doesn't slip on you. Hang on. Oh, just for a minute. Watch over. Under. I sit tight. And then I'm going to do a second one where I go under. And then over. If you do two in the same direction, what will eventually happen is as tension tightens on this, it's gonna slowly pull the knot further and further back, and then eventually we'll just let go. All right, and then let's snip this. Nice thing about having more than one thread source. If you have later on when we've got in the pattern and we need to do uh, multiple colors, you can still do multiple colors with it. Come on, thread. You just have to have one source of thread for each hole that you're going to do in that turn sequence. There's that one. And the nice thing about doing this is if I was doing a single thread at a time, I'd have to go through the entire warping path each time. Mm -hmm. And if I was doing a full warping, it would mean I'd be taking probably each single pass through the warp maybe takes a couple of minutes. But if you have to do that a bunch of times, it gets long and tedious. Yeah. Uh, so if you're able to take more than one thread through your warp warping path at the same time, it speeds you up a lot. Uh, the tying part is also where a lot of things end up taking up time. Let's 
let's take this one through. And if your cards are a little flippy or not quite in the, that pattern, that's all right. When we're finished setting it up, we'll go through and just make sure all the cards are in the right place. I like to have the thread that I'm working with, that I'm going to be cutting off of. I like to hold it with my mouth just because it's an easier way to hold on to it, and then I can use both fingers to tie it. But if you've got another method that works for you, go for it. Or if you don't want to touch the thread. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sean? You should move the glass so Lucy doesn't knock it on the keyboard. That's no, fine. Over and under, then under and over. All right, there's the first card. And if you guys have any questions as I'm going, feel free to ask and go ahead. That part. Make sense so far? Uh -huh. Makes sense. Awesome. And now we do this again. This so mm. since the next two cards uh, in the pattern are the exact same thing, mm, actually, no, I'll hold off on that. No, nope, I take that back. I'm going to show you another fun thing. OK. Because I have two more sources of the same color. Whee! <laughs> so this is a method where if you can put a thread through every hole on your card, you can do more than one at a time. So since the next two rows are all yellow, I'm gonna set these up now. Since one is an S and the other is a Z, I'm just gonna flip one so I've got them like this. When it's set up, all I have to do is take this and flip it over. And they'll be in the right form for what I need. So we're going to go this one. This one. No, I can't do that because all four. Then our third hole through C. I need to move this up just a little so you can see my hands. Then our fourth thread. And this is something you don't have to do, but I learned it, I love it, and now I use it as much as I possibly can because it also reduces a lot of time. It's always a good thing. All right, and then let's do the tie. Uh, nice thing about this technique, if you are interested in doing double face patterns, this will make the warping of your band sped up, speed up so much because the threads in all of the cards are the same all the way through. You've got too light and too dark, unless you're doing some fun things with it. So let's make sure I've got all of these where they need to be. And we're going to do is we're going to drop the first card and leave it behind. We're going to carry the second card through because we're going to drop it in a minute. So now we take the second card all the way through the warping path. If I can get them to stay with me. You know what? 
these threads are annoying me. You're going over here. I go there. Something important to keep in mind as you're going through this is to try and keep your tension even or how tight the threads are. If you have, uh, for instance, early on, a couple that are really loose and then later some that are really tight, you're gonna have some wonkiness that happens in the band. Yeah. There are some ways to correct it, but it's easier to have something work out right nicely when you're setting it up rather than go back and try and fix it. So I just do a bit of tight, do a half knot, tighten. Nope, I don't need to tighten yet. I forgot a thing, so I'm not doing one set. Wee -hee -hee. Okay, you get re-anchored. All right. So third card, we're gonna drop this one now and then do one more full set of round the warping path. Something I want to get is a tool that has a base and then um, a metal pole that you put each of your sources of thread on and it has a central pole that goes out and has little wire hooks that come out in a couple spots that you take your thread and you just kind of loop them into or thread them through so that when you're warping, you can just pull directly on it and you don't have to worry about your bundles of thread flying away or doing something funky. Oh, yeah, that would make it easier, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's on my list of tools to get eventually. <laughs> Here's all these those. <laughs> okay, now we can tie it off. I don't know which one I did the first time, so we're just going to do an additional one. I am a little surprised that Lucy hasn't photobombed. <laughs> when I set this up, Lucy was running around like, ooh, new place to step? What's this? What's this? Yeah. It's really cute. All right, just push those all away. And there's the first three. Next, that's the next one. So I'm just gonna wind these up a little bit so the threads are more manageable. Something you can do too, um, if you're got multiple sources of thread that you're pulling thread off of at the same time. You can have like a bucket or a bin that you put the thread in. And then as you're pulling on the thread, it just rolls around in the bucket bin. Basket also works too. And also keeps it from flying away or cats to saying, ooh, thread. <laughs> it never happened, right? <laughs> our two, two of our cats, Lucy and Koshak, aren't interested too much in thread unless it's wide thread or very thick. It is then they'll play with it indefinitely as long as it's mm -hmm. moving and wiggly. If it's not moving and wiggly, it's like, eh. It's like fiber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for spinning. It's, oh, goodness. Wow, what is that? Can I eat it? Can I eat it? Yeah. Our old cat, she used to love to eat wool fiber. Especially that we've like, not yet been washed. Yeah. Yes. Unwashed wool fleeces. Yes. So much fun because of all the lanolin in it. Oh, yeah. All that tastiness. Okay. So the next one is going to be Z. So I'm coming in from the front 
and coming out the back. And the S versus Zs, uh, if you get them confused, don't worry about it too much. Um, or I say, don't be get on yourself about getting them confused frequently. I still have to reference a thing every single time. <laughs> you just put the letter on the card that's an S or a Z? Oh. You could, but then if you're going to reuse the cards, that might be more confusing later. Uh, hmm. Yeah. S and Zs. Yeah. I say this because I'm the one that would confuse it constantly. <laughs> it's like it'd be like trying to ask me right from left. <laughs> I'm just like quick. And ambidextrous. And ambidextrous. So oh, there's that's more fun. difference between I right mean, and left. Nice on ambidextry. But I can see that not necessarily contributing to preventing helping confusion. Yeah. It was how I could tell my right from my left leg. The le right leg was stronger. When I injured my right knee, the left leg became my right leg because it was stronger. Oh, no. Or, wait, left leg became the right leg because it was stronger, so you were favoring your left more than your right? No, because, well, whenever it was, you're supposed to lead with you know, the stronger leg. The stronger leg. Because it's kind of like, yeah, oh. well, in a car accident, my knee impacted the steering column because I'm short. Mm. And it kind of tore the meniscus. Oh, no. Which, even after surgery, was never the same again. Yeah. <laughs> accident was 26 years ago? Yeah, it was in 94. So, yeah. Little stupid yeah. things. <laughs> Nice and tight. Now we do over and under. Okay. There's the first two. And now the next two. I'm hoping this will help that the warping process for this will be a bit faster than the last time I did it. Regrettably, the last time I did it, I was still doing single hole thread. I haven't used this pattern in a while. And when I first started weaving, I of course went, ah, this is boring. How can I make it less boring? I know, let's take the def the standard pattern, put that as the center, and then we're gonna take the variant pattern and add it on each of the sides. <laughs> and then have fun with colors. Of course, I didn't still have trouble with uh, getting color tones right so they don't look like, oh, it's all the same color because the tone is too close. Oh dear. So I had like a dark blue and a dark green next to each other and you couldn't tell that they were different. Oh, oh yeah. I also did single hole threading for the entire thing. And because I bumped it up from 10 cards to about 20 some odd. <laughs> oh dear. It took me about six, eight hours to warp. Oh yeah. It's like warping a loom. Mm -hmm. Which is why the reason why I say I love this method because if even if you're only doing two threads at a time, if it would take you six hours to warp it, it will drop it to maybe three and a half. It's not quite reducing your time in half, but close. Someday I have to get back to the spreading of the line. Yeah, my lungs are in the question. Well, at least it's not sitting down in the chair anymore. Oh, yes. And these are, the cards I'm using are from Laces. Oh, They're yeah. about two and a quarter inches. I have bigger ones that are about three, three and a half inches. I don't recommend them for 
general use on tablet weaving on an inkle loom. Uh, I would say use them if you're going to be using like a floor or tapestry or table loom because they'll take a bit more space. It's a little bit easier to turn there. Mm, In this case, my hands. Yeah, bigger also. cards means bigger shuttle space, which also mm. means that you're going to lose more space from the space that the card itself takes up and the extra on each end, which if you're using a three inch card means you're probably going to lose about eight to 12 inches at the end of your band. Ooh. With the two oh. and a half inch cards, I lose about six to eight inches, give or take a little. Yeah. So smaller cards are better. Yes. I like them. I've seen cards that are like one to two inches and I just haven't tried them or like one, one and a half inches. Oh. I haven't tried those ones yet though. Probably be good for little hand. Next is an S, and in this pattern, in this one, A is going to be red, and the other three are going to be yellow. Let's go with finding the end. If, while we're going, if there's anything which you want to see more clearly or would like me to uh, re-demonstrate, just let me know. Okay. A general warning, when uh, threading more than one thread through it, a card at a time, make sure they're all threaded in the same direction. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. I've had it happen a couple times. I uh, threaded a couple in one direction and a couple in another direction. I was like, this isn't turning right. What's going on here? Oh, that one worked too well, put it. <laughs> it. It messes with the pattern just a bit, and then eventually it doesn't want to turn. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. We don't have to. Um, but I like to kind of even out the ends before I tie them, uh, yeah. mainly okay. so that I've got less, uh, I think it's more of a reducing waste of thread. Yeah, waste isn't good. That said, that's what I'm using right now is the Knit Fix's Cotton Curio Thread, okay. which has like 720 yards on it for like four bucks a spool oh uh, yeah four dollars yeah so it picks is cotton curio thread uh in where is it on here yeah 721 yards or about 100 grams weight okay. only caution with the nitpicks curio thread is Occasionally, they will remove most, if not all, of the colors in the curio line, and oh, then the they're curio. gone, and you have to wait for the new versions to come out. Oh, uh, nice. That said, I'm pretty happy with the current ones that have come out. There's one from the old set I wish I could get again. Um, it's this really nice dark forest green. But the new one that's come out is this one. Oh, the nice green. And I'm thinking of using it in combination with this one for some West Kingdom related colors. Yes. Oh, good match. Nice. Yeah. Because comparatively, this yellow to this yellow, this one's a lot more vibrant. Yeah, it's nice, nice yeah, yeah, more of a wheat and gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I music for it, yeah. but that'd be, those would be good West Kingdom colors. Yeah. Generally speaking, the new set are a lot more vibrant. It looks like they've upped the um, saturation on a lot of the colors. Cool. But I say that with that warning, because if you're working on a project, make sure you get what you need. Oh, yeah. In case they stop coming. You can still find them on places like eBay or Ravelry sometimes when someone's destashing. But if you've got a deadline or a project, make sure you've got what you need. 
Yeah. Or if you find one you really love, maybe stock up on it a little. Yeah. Like with the embroidery thread. Mm -hmm. They do have, if you want the entire, entire color pack, they have a sale that runs on them. Not a sale, they have a, a discounted pack where you get one of each of the rolls at like a 15, 20% off. 20% 20. 20 off the uh, uh, original cost if you were going to buy each of them individually. Oh, well, that's pretty good. And they frequently run sales. So if you only want a certain ones, hang around for a sale, and they'll usually be one. And they'll go for about 20 to 25% off. 40, they do 40 like sometimes. 40% off sale a few times a year. 40% off, 40 off sales about two times a year? Yeah. This is a pattern that I'm able to work with just off of the my computer screen. But if you are having trouble keeping track of where you're at on it, I recommend printing it out and then just adding like a tick mark or something else after each card that you finished so you can keep track. Especially if you need to put it down and come back to it. Yeah. So next we're gonna have two red, two yellow. All right, and this is going to be red through B and D, and we are a S. Through B, not A. If uh, another thing that can sometimes happen is while you're threading the cards, you may start on like offset uh, a little bit by a rotation or something. Like you might confuse your A with your B side, but if you keep the sequence the same all the way through, you can still work with it fine. You're just gonna have one card that's gonna look a little bit different. As long as the sequence of the threading is the same, you can still work with that. All right. Let me get these nice and tight. I tend to go rather heavy on my tension, or rather tight. Um, I like really tight tension. You can go with a bit of a looser tension and still be fine. Uh, I just prefer going a bit tighter because I have a better gauge of being able to get back to that specific tightness when I need to advance it. Yeah, yeah. A lighter tension, though, can sometimes mean that you've got uh, your edges, the wet thread may not poke through quite as much. Um, or you, I've, some people have said they've been able to get a tighter packing down for how tightly the, the lines on the pattern are done. Because they're able to separate the threads a little bit more. All right. That is card six. All right. Yes. Card six. <laughs> Next up is seven, which is going to have one red, oh. three yellow. 
Can you give me an example of how to write up patterns? Not for this class. All right. Actually, yeah, I'll take it there for later. Thank you. All right. Next card is S again. Yellow through all but C. A lot of pattern threads will either have a, a section of like this number of cards are going to go in all S and then some are in all Z. Um, some patterns will alternate back and forth between them. It varies a little bit based on how they want it to work uh, and in which way they want the threads to turn to complete their pattern. Were you able to uh, join the classroom for a Google Classroom where I've got the description and handouts? No. OK. I'll add them in here in a minute. Okay. One of them is a link to the pattern for this. And the other is a document that I put together with Lenore uh, Rosini. Um, sorry, Jenna okay. Lorenzo. Had to get the right name there. Uh, we put together a simple like overview of narrow band weaving of with uh, some term definitions, a couple different styles of looms, and resources that you can use to get the things. Over. I'm being a little bit more cautious with making sure I'm doing over and under and then under and over because my last band that I put together, um, I didn't as accurately or consistently. And then we're going to do reds. And I was using a more stretchy thread. So by the time I finished, oh, and then my uh, tension bar moved a couple of times Whoa. while I was working on it. So I had to retighten it a couple of times, which meant different tensions from the beginning versus the end. And I had to go back oh. through and redo a lot of the tensioning. Oh, dear. A part of it was because the tension rod moved, and a part of it was because threads had just not held onto each other. And then let go. They hadn't come out of their knots for the most part, oh, but they had slid. Sliding this. Uh, this is a Z. On the other hand, Get to practice your knots a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I've seen some people use different types of knots. I've tried using a few others. I don't tend to remember them for very long. <laughs> so I ended up sticking with the one that's familiar. Yeah. It's no good if you can't remember how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I learned knots, some, when I was a kid, and then promptly forgot them because I didn't need to use them. Yeah, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yes. Like you embroider stitches. Oh, I know. Learn these really interesting embroidery stitches. A few years later, it's the stuff that's on my clothes I'm wearing. It's like, a, I wish I could remember how to do that one. <laughs> I know yeah. that feeling. Yeah. 
I went to a, a class for some basic embroidery stitches uh, during, I think it was the West Miss, Miss West War, one of the last ones. Uh, that was at Skyline Park, I think. Yeah. It was really windy that day, but we were able to get awesome. inside to use the indoor, indoor space. Oh, cool. I, that class was neat. I will probably do more with that eventually. So I'm finding I really like fine definition and details of things. Making those is fun for me. I find that embroidery is good at loosening up the fingers, the muscles and stuff too. So I can see that. My hands look stiff from doing a lot of throwing and painting. Oddly enough. Well, that, oh. that used different muscles. That was a Lucy meep. Hi, Lucy. Cat bomb. Oh, yep. Incoming cat bomb. Yep. And there's the key. Orange oh. key. Yeah, this is Lucy. This is my camera now. Let me rub against the threads and potentially knock them off. Yep. <laughs> Last time I worked um, with weaving on my table room, 32 inches across, and four threads per inch. And then a door came in once. Yeah. And then I spent six hours on nodding. Well, she has claimed a spot. She has decided to sit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Lucy. She's going to pet you a bunch until you move. <laughs> <laughs> this is now mine. Oh, dear. That is all we need for the reds. Yep, so about an hour is needed for this class. All right, next up, multiple cards in yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do three. Right, that was part of the reason why I wanted to. Um, I prefer ending the same with the same threading direction as you start. Uh, it has a little bit of a making sure that the they look more symmetrical to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. C S. Bloop. Bloop. There was another structural reason, but I can't remember because I haven't done it that way in so long. <laughs> Okay, S is coming from the back. Come on, go through. Don't get stuck an inch in. Hi, Lucy. Thread two. Hey, bundle. Downside of rolly balls on a flat table without edges. Like to roll away. Where's your end? It's like the end of hundred seconds. Yeah. Or after one too many incidents with the cat not having the hundred sided die anymore. <laughs> Two fifty sided beers. Wait, say that once more, because I heard two hundred and fifty sided beers. No, hundred sided die had the little. Oh, it's one of the faceted spheres. Okay, yeah. sphere. Yeah. I heard sphere. That's what it was. Yes. Yes. Sphere. And it hit the floor one too many times because cat get a hold of it. it 
two 50 sided hemispheres <laughs> and all the little plastic pellets from the inside all over the floor. Oh no. It didn't roll the same with tape holding it together. It never really rolled again. Yeah, balance would be off after that. Yep. yep. I think I have a 50 sided die somewhere. I have a 34 sided die. That's oh, an interesting one. Yeah, I never found out what the use was for it, but it was so weird I had to buy it. It was. I'll tell you how long ago that was. That was at a gaming convention. Probably a very yeah. specific game thing. We were in preschool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was that long ago. of 30 years. Yes. Still have it, though. Yep. It was really good I at ranting up random. That in 30 sided die in 27. And for a while, I would collect just the most odd die second time. That's fine, we'll fix you in a minute. All right, I'm going through the path and I'm doing the multi card warping yeah. again. And then we drop our next card. Ah, I was right. He's mine. Ah. Oh, stop rolling. <laughs> Over the cable. Yeah. The only downside with this particular method is it's easier to not have even tension. Mm. Yeah. So you have to make sure as you're going through that you're keeping an even amount of tension as you go. You can do a little bit of, if you're only doing a handful of cards, by the time you finish, and by handful I mean less than five-ish, um, there's, or if your warping path isn't very complex, then you can usually just pull out the extra tension at the end. Um, but if you've got more, or your warping path is long and complex and adds resistance, you want to go through and intermittently just pull on the thread a little, just to get it tight before you tie it off. So, right now, I'm going to take both ends. I'm going to do a half knot and tighten. And now if I try to, there isn't a whole lot of movement here. There's a little, but not a lot, which is just what I need. Under. Right. I did um, a similar warping path a little while back for as a test to see how quickly I could warp up a double face pattern on it on a mm -hmm. short warping path. And it took maybe 30 minutes from start to finish. It was really nice. And that was about a 20 card pattern. Hmm. But because it was double face, all the threads were the same, which made it a lot faster. Wow. Uh, if I'm doing something similar to the Lord of the Rings band I've done before, where I'm changing the foreground pattern colors intermittently, it still mm -hmm. takes longer, but it's not crazy long. All right, now I'm going to pull this out just a little. Uh, 
All right. And next thing, that tape you were using to hold down, you can use on your shuttle now. Uh, and I use it this way, as long as it's still got a good stickiness to it, uh, to set up your shuttle with your weft thread. You, I some some people will just leave it blank and leave it as is. Uh, I like to take a little bit of the end of my weft thread, put it under a piece of tape on the shuttle, just like that. Holds it in place, and I don't have to worry about it trying to run away from me later. Makes sense. The only thing I haven't figured out a way to make faster is the winding up the shuttle with thread. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't need a whole lot, but I need a bit. This shuttle's openings are a little wonky. That said, I love this shuttle on this loom because when I'm done with it, I can just do that. Well, that's cool. That way you don't lose it. Yep. And it doesn't fly away from you too fast. Uh, if you're traveling, I would put like a hair tie or something else um, across the space, like across both of the things, just so that, or a third one, uh, so the shuttle doesn't accidentally fly off. Hmm. Or more like gradually slide off into the middle of the car car in the back seat somewhere. Yeah, it just gets into a crevice somewhere, never to be seen again. And if it's dangling and you start pulling on the thread where it's attached to the loom, it's gonna start flipping and then you're gonna unravel from the shuttle. Oh. oh. I've had that happen a few times. Fortunately, it can usually catch them pretty fast, so you don't have a lot to get thrown off. I don't have a whole lot to wind back up on it. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have any like really good markers for how much to put on your sh on your shuttle. Um, so I'm mostly eyeballing it, and as you work with it, you'll find the better you'll find the, the rough approximation as you go. If you have extra, you can do some of the blooms, some of the pieces with it in a future band. We're going to go with that. If you don't have quite enough, you can do a similar technique to how I'm going to get this started to kind of like splice in having uh, more thread as you go. Actually, I'm going to show that technique here. I'm taking a little bit extra. Yep. All right, so before we start weaving, I want to make sure the cards are all in the right positions. So first one is going to be an S. They're coming out the back. Perfect. Next one needs to be a Z. That one I need to flip them. Yeah, I need to flip that one because they need to come out the front. Sometimes this is easier if you loosen your loom a bit, which I should probably have done. And you're getting caught on. Ah, uh, you came loose. No. So now they're in the front, and then the next one's an S. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Um, and the next one is back to an S, so we've got it in the back. And then we have a Z, needs to come out the front. 
perfect. And then S for the next three. So out the back, out the back, out the back. And then we have a Z, so it needs to come out the front. Yep. And then out the back, front, back again. All right. And with that, we're ready to get started. So. Eventually, you may not need to, but just starting out, I suggest having a flat surface that you can beat against. Just where you're going to take your shuttle in and press them tight. Uh, the IKEA bag clips work pretty well. You get it lined up and just clip it. Just like that. Then you would, we're going to turn the cards away one quarter turn uh, whenever you're dealing with turns in tablet weaving patterns it's always a quarter turn unless it's specified as a half turn or a full turn or otherwise you won't usually encounter those unless it's something that's more complex right. So when I set up, I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail behind. And the reasoning is the next couple of turns, we're going to weave this back in, and it gives it a little more structure, not less structure. Uh, it gives it, prevents the thread from flying out as easily. Also, on the first like inch or so, don't worry about things not being like super tight on their width or looking a bit messy. It's all right. It's perfectly normal. So as you can see, that's at two rows. I'm going to bring this down a little more. There we go. So I've got two rows there. And let's go another. Shuttle in. I do a thing where I pull it in and then. Sorry, adjusting a little more. I twist the shuttle up just a little and down a little. Uh, it ends up pressing the fibers just a bit further away from each other. And it works well. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm just holding on to a little bit of the weft thread as it goes through. And then I'm pinching with my forefinger and my thumb just enough, just tight enough that I can feel it disappear. What it does is it helps prevent some of the, uh, a bit of the thread getting caught and rolling up on itself. When that happens, you end up getting just a little bit of the thread getting stuck a little like that. Um, and you get these little bumps on the sides. We'll just continue that. Now that we've got something at the base, I'm going to remove the clip. Probably pull this a little tighter. And I'm just pinching it and pulling it right. Oop, nope. Eh. I didn't rotate the cards yet. All right, rotate. Shuttle in, pulling it down. And you're just pressing it down to pack things in. And then we're just going to continue this. At this point, you could probably leave this out here and not worry about it anymore. 
Uh, you only really need to get it to go in about two or three stitches or so, or rows, not stitches. Oh, I still can't see what I'm doing from over here. Pardon me. There we go, a little better. So I'm just rotating the cards forward again. Shuttle in. And that, that twist that I do, you don't have to do. Um, I just find that it works well for me. I started doing it when I was doing pickup bands and I was having problems with threads not separating from each other. Mm -hmm. So I occasionally have a thread that would show up on a weird place, like it was being picked up, when it shouldn't have been picked up. All right, and we can start seeing the pattern there now. Nice thing is, if you ever make any mistakes, it's like, say, I went too forward. It doesn't look too weirdly different, but if I realized, oh wait, I went too far, all I have to do now is rotate the cards backwards. And if I needed to go back further, I just take my shuttle back through and keep going back. So correcting mistakes with weaving, and especially tablet weaving, is fairly nice. You just end up doing the reverse of whatever you had just done. So if you were going forward, you turn back. If you were going turning backwards, you turn forwards. All right. And the, the thing I mentioned, if you run out of thread on your shuttle, what you can do is similarly to how we started of taking a thread and carrying it with us a couple rows. If this was going to be the new thread I was gonna work with, or we'll say it's the old one, uh, I would just carry it with me for a couple of turns. And I do that, and then we just flip these back and forth. On a neat note, you can do supplementary weft threads using a very similar method here. I made, did an experiment where I added in little like pony beads by taking a secondary weft and I would put it in like about halfway here, put a bead through it, overlap another couple of the rings and then bring it down. And then where that little overlap line is, that's where the bead would be instead. Cool. Yeah. Come out thread. On a similar neat note of brocading, I haven't done it yet, so take this with lots of salt, but it's a lot of using supplementary wefts from what I can tell so far, and an order sequence of when you put them through, and keeping some above the others as you go. It's something I wanna, it's on my eventual list to pick up learning how to do. So I'm gonna leave those threads be for now. I'm gonna go a couple more turns here. So I'm gonna show you something. As we're rotating the cards forward, we're building twist here and holding it in place with the weft thread we're passing back and forth. But counter problem to that. Oh, I'm gonna go one more just to finish that diamond is we're building up twist on the other side of the cards here. Yeah. Eventually, that could be a problem if we were just going forward the entire time. Uh, 
you'd end up either having to push it on along the band and come back to it, or you can start turning in the reverse direction. It'll flip the pattern. So what if we do this? It's going to rotate the threads in the reverse direction they've been going, which will reduce. And we're going to do this bit too. Uh, the twist that's accumulated so far. I'm leaving little loops here because I found that it evens out. Oh, I'm going backwards, not forwards. Let the edges a little bit nicer. I end up just taking these loops. And then we're going to pull them through now. I keep it pinched. Sometimes what will happen when you reverse direction is you'll feel a little bit of a bulge in the, the fiber and the band. Hmm. It's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Uh, it's just the section where the threads reversed positioning and they weren't in the same space as they were in the previous ones. So it stands out a little bit more. Uh, depending on how tight it was and what you did though it can make it kind of want to twist a little or fold not fold um, either come up a little bit on the edges or down a little bit so it'd go more like that more like this If you're having a bit of trouble with your edges not coming out even, you can also leave that little loop behind, which I'll show here. Leave a little bit of a loop. You do the next rotation of your cards. Pack it down. And then pull the, the loop through now. Because the next card's threads are already in place, it doesn't want to flip around quite as much. So if you're having trouble keeping getting your edges smooth or roughly even the same style, also if you're having trouble with them with the, the width fluctuating a lot, that can help. That is pretty much how it goes. Any questions so far? Yeah. Good, good description. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. There it is. And if you reverse directions, it helps if the camera can see it. Yeah. It just flips the direction the pattern goes. Yeah. A lot of the extant examples for tablet weaving we have that I've seen so far are a lot of them going in one direction. That can be either due to the style of loom they were using at the time, just was able to work with it easier. They were able to undo the twist later. Um, or it could also be a part of, it may have been a longer piece and we only have yeah. This one section of it where it was going in one direction, and we don't have the section where it wasn't going in that direction anymore. Makes sense. I haven't done a lot of research on that, but that's what I found so far on it. Uh, other thing you can do that's nice and handy, if you're doing an all forward or all one direction pattern, you can write, like, I'll take a bit of tape and I'll put it on my on here or on the side here, somewhere that's easily visible, and write an arrow on it for which direction I'm turning at that moment. Mm -hmm. So if I was, so if I put it down and I was turning forward, I'd have a little arrow that would point that direction. 
And if I put it down and I came back to it six days later, <laughs> I can look at that little uh, yeah. sticker to tell, oh, that's the way I was turning before. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Where the comments are Oh, yeah. That direction. Right. Anything oh. else that I can clarify at all? Okay. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Yay. So this is your first time teaching the class? Digitally, yes. Uh, I've taught it in person a few times. Yeah, doing it digitally is a little different. <laughs> it is. It's a little, the, the way I teach it in person is a lot more hands-on, uh, where I'll get it started, yeah. and then I turn it over to the students to do the process and go through it. I'm very much the, I learn by doing things. Yeah. And even if that's not the primary way you learn, it can help having a visual of how this process works and oh, yeah. physically doing the thing. Yeah. The motion visual rather than just little pictures. Yeah. Pictures are just so abstract. Because, yeah, there was a couple months ago where we're going to be sitting for a while waiting for the postal person to pick up our packages because. Mm -hmm. Post office is closed. Trying to learn null banding from the video. Mm, yes. It, about the sixth video in, I finally got it. Find someone who would do it in a way that actually makes sense. Clicked for you. Clicked for me. Yeah. <laughs> this have a, really interesting. Have you talked to learn Sigrund at all? What? Have you talked to Sigrund at all? Names and faces. I, I'm really bad with names. And now it's names and They do um, a lot of their brain, words, connections. Um, yeah. They've been doing a, a lot of null binding. Uh, they've null bounded their own hats. They've done socks, gloves, a bunch of things. Yeah. Let me send you a link to their profile. Okay. They've been doing a lot of it and they teach it as well. Oh, good. Look at that uh, little bound hat. And it's and very it's, comfortable. It's very we comfy. a lot less. And it's kind of, well, maybe I could learn that. And one of the gift mm -hmm. sets that we got for some autocratting, I think, was a uh, no bound needle and a, and a little bit of yarn. So it's kind of nice. There we are. Just sent it to you over Facebook. Okay. And there's a little buzz down. A little buzz. All right. Cool. Well, that's been the class. I hope you've enjoyed. Yes, we did. Yay. Okay. I'm going to stop recording. Okay.